Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I hope you enjoyed the lunch. Uh, now everybody is digesting, and my job is you to keep you awake by talking about standardization of touring control structures in Austria. Uh, yeah, it was quite a nice, uh, let's say, um, goal for us. We were just a group of 15 persons from university, from the Austrian Federal Service of Torrent and Avalanche Control, from civil engineering offices, and we have tried to overcome some known problems, known problems since the last, let's say, 150 years. And so long as our official tradition in designing mitigation structures in torrents. And I think there in Slovenia, there are also still some structures existing. Uh, so we have 10,000 of structures. And because of the long tradition, there is a high degree of freedom in designing structural mitigation works. And because of this, uh, there are always different assumptions used. And of course, there was no asset management till now. Asset means the structures. And so we tried to harmonize science with practitioners, with administration, using, using the Eurocode as a vehicle to start the process and to develop national guidelines, let's say regulations in the first step. And they also should be scenario oriented. Uh, so what were the needs for us? Of course, we have heard floods, we have heard debris flows, but if you ask the people, everybody says, OK, this is this process, this is that process. And so there is no common terminology available. Uh, we also have to think about the design event. So should we use 100 years, 300 years, and so on? Uh, we have to collect all different structural types and to come out with some very simple schemes. And then design situation, partial safety factors, construction rules, asset management, and of course to develop uh, an inventory database for all the things. And as you can see, uh, the structures, they looked how they looked 120 years before. And nowadays, we have some uh, more or less very sophisticated structures uh, that way against the debris flows. Uh, for the approaches, now, uh, the, the first is, uh, attempts go back to, uh, let's say, 1891. It's a French scientist who wrote something about the dimensioning of uh, torrential structures. And as you can see, the density was assumed 1,000 to 1,800 kilograms per cubic meter, and then using either earth pressure or static water pressure for designing. And so this attempt changed a little bit. And then you can see here, I think, uh, so, so there were some other densities. Uh, and then for the, for the Swiss ones, so they said it's 1.3 uh, uh, static water pressure for uh, designing. But then was a very, very uh, important input from Lichtenhahn. And uh, it was said, OK, uh, we should use the 7 to 10 uh, multiplied water pressure because the density of a debris flow is 7 to 10 tons per cubic meter. What's well, nonsense, but at least 7 to 10 times has survived till nowadays. But the principal idea was not correct. Uh, another structure, very famous one, and this one was uh, uh, designed uh, with uh, pressures uh, coming from avalanche calculations. So we have 250 kilonewtons per square meter. And to bring all these ideas together, yeah, we brought four regulations to the market. The one is terminology. The second is impacts, the third was design, and the fourth was maintenance. Uh, they were published between 2009 and 2013, and so they are since, let's say, six years on the market. And so now we are combining them and bring out to publish really a, a code, the code 4800, uh, next year 
hopefully, uh, to the market. Uh, if we have a look on such a catchment, you have seen in the last presentations, you have also seen some landslides and so on, but this is a catchment, so we have hydrological calculations, we have debris sources, uh, we have, uh, let's say, that, uh, the, the, the watershed and the alluvial, not alluvial, the debris cone. Uh, we have vulnerable goods and we have to think, so to build in some structures uh, against a process which is derived from the assumptions from the watershed and so on. And I want to tell you and to talk about more or less our way how to develop this uh, regulations or the code. And so first of all, we have to think about the design event, about the so-called leading process, to think about the protection concept with the functions, to rethink all the hydraulic calculations, because normally the hy hydraulics are based on subcritical flows and we normally have supercritical flow and so all the factors are a little bit uh, questionable. Questionnaire, limit states, parameter idealized model, consequence class, ge geotechnical category coming to design situations, selections uh, of combinations for the different actions to utilize the, uh, the semi-probabilistic concept with partial safety factors and then basic drawings, reinforcement layout to have an idea about the fulfillment of the protection goal and then all the asset, ma asset management with maintenance, condition assessment, intervention, planning and decision making plan. So it was a quite huge task and to bring in all those uh, different ideas from different communities. So first of all, uh, this is now our proposed differentiation between the different flow types what may occur in torrential catchments, starting from flood, bed load transport, debris flow, and coming then to the real debris flow. And on this uh, sheet you can find more or less the physical parameters. For example, the volumetric uh, uh, sediment concentration, the densities, uh, viscosity, if we have to consider shear strength, which uh, relevant stresses may occur. And then uh, to the more nature science based uh, uh, classification, uh, the vertical distribution of sediments, deposition patterns, sorting of damages, uh, sorting of depositions, and so on. Because this is what we can see outside in the field. and to get some information if we dig into the ground and do something in sedimentology. Uh, and then, okay, what to do with all the mitigation structures, where we are, what possibilities do we have to mitigate torrential uh, events? So, of course, there's the big uh, classification into uh, active and passive mitigation. Active meaning we are doing something with the ongoing process. Passive meaning we are thinking about uh, vulnerability and exposure. Uh, the, the, uh, the code mainly deals with structural measures, uh, which are proactive or the preventive measures, which can be uh, distinguished between disposition management and event management. What does this mean? Disposition means that we lower the uh, the disposition that an event will be triggered. So we have to stabilize the sediments in the, in the, in the, in the creek and so on. Uh, event management means that we let the process, the flood, the debris flow just go, go by and we are thinking at least at one point to do something with the process and to have there the mitigation. Uh, what does this mean? We have different functions defined for all these structures. Channel enlargement, stabilization, consolidation, diversion, filtration, dosing, retention, energy dissipation and deflection. So these are the main functions. And for example, we also included filtration. This is, for example, just to filter out woody debris. Retention is another topic. Uh, flood retention is not included in our uh, regulation. But these uh, orange lines indicate 
which function may influence which process if we are talking about disposition management. So these are more or less the first functions. Uh, they may all influence processes. On the other hand, we have uh, event management. So we are having the ongoing process. And so we have filtration, dosing, retention, energy, dissipation, and deflection. And so this is mainly for uh, debris flow and debris flood or filtration and dosing as well as for debris uh, for bad load transport. Uh, what can we do? What can we say about this? This is a statistic about uh, the number of structures which are categorized according to the functions. It's, it's not completed the list, no? it's, but you can see stabilization. So we have about 40,000, 25,000 consolidation and so on. So, uh, uh, at least maybe if we have uh, picked up all, all the structures, we may double the numbers we have in Austria. And then Eurocode. This was the base. And what we have to think about, uh, more or less, uh, we have the structure should be designed to have adequate structural resistance, serviceability, durability, and what I've learned today, also sustainability. Uh, what comes out of this, we have to make a distinction between ultimate, state limit, uh, ultimate limit states and serviceability limit states. We should define design situations that may be persistent, transient, or accidental. The other things are, can be left. So these are now our ultimate limit states we have to consider in designing structures. Geotechnical, structural, equilibrium, hydraulic, and uplift. So these are our main ultimate limit states we have to consider. L quite a lot of them are uh, identified in other Euro codes and in national uh, guidelines according to the Euro code, where we can take out some parameters, especially the partial safety factors. The, uh, the simplified action model. So we have seen today uh, the debris flow calculation. So this might be on the right hand side. Uh, so we have uh, velocity, flow height, density, and so on. We have to think about the impact on the structure, and we have to interpret this into some uh, uh, static uh, values. Uh, uniformly distributed static load, uniformly distributed dynamic load, single impact, triangular static load, and so on, just to have some ideas uh, which dresses act on the structure. And we have given the engineers some characteristic values for the density. Let's say debris flow is about 2,000 kilograms per square meter, and so there are some assumptions of mean velocities. But of course, if you have a good model, you can use the result of your models. This is just for thousands of torrents that may, uh, may bring or result with debris flows. So and we cannot calculate, we cannot do a numerical calculation for all the torrents. And so it's a very simple approach. Uh, we have to put these uh, loads to the structure. Uh, uh, what, what the thing what we normally can measure in the field uh, is the uh, cross section of a debris flow. And we project this area to the structure. And we have said uh, it's a, such a value of coming from experience. Normally, debris flows don't have higher flow heights than four meters. So we come on with these four meters to the structure. And for this, uh, we have this uh, dynamic load assumption. And for the other area, we use the static load. Uh, this is then a theme uh, where we uh, compared uh, values from liter literature, it's Chinese literature, where they have measured some dynamic uh, impacts. And these are now our lines for the characteristic uh, values. And single impact, we have made some investigations. And we said, OK, we use the value of one mega Newton per uh, a quarter of a square meter just for uh, structural ultimate limit state. OK, 
Then what to do with the classes of consequence? We use them to define two different types of structures. One is called key structure, the other one is called standard structure. Uh, key structures, of course, must have a, a higher resilience against uh, impacts and so on. Uh, they should survive and standard structure also may fail, not causing a lot of consequences for the uh, downward uh, situated uh, settlement. Geotechnical categories are used uh, uh, for investigations from the beginning of the design to the end of the design. And we said uh, we don't want to have too much geotechnical engineers on the site because then it's getting expensive. So we want to do quite a lot of things by ourselves. And we have uh, grouped uh, the geotechnical categories based on the found, uh, foundation ground composition, the height of the structure, and then again with standard or key structures, and we have these three groups. A may be done by the engineers of the torrent control, B, torrent control engineers and geotechnical engineers, and C, just by geotechnical engineers. Uh, design situation, persistent, transign, and accidental. Uh, this is uh, important to define then the different uh, actions. And yeah, you can see here uh, which type of actions we are using for the different design situations and if they are time variable, spatial variable, and if they are static or dynamic. And of course, we can discuss about if the normal hydro uh, hydrodynamic pressure it's more or less our design case is a permanent action or not. So the French, uh, uh, they have already translated into French our regulations and they put it to the variable action. So this is a discussion, but it's okay. We only have to think at least the result is the same. And of course the reactions, because our structures are all, may also be impacted by avalanches, tides of shoe, rockfall, landslide, earthquake, traffic loads, and so on. And the last ones are for serviceability limit states. What, or in which way such a combination of action may look like, it's especially for deep debris flows. So on the one hand side, this is an already backfill structure. So you have water, earth pressure, uh, and the dynamic load is just acting on the upper part of the structure. Uh, so we use this on that way. Uh, we have a uh, load, a vertical load, and this is the same situation, but not for the backfill structure. So you have a, uh, this uh, dynamic load just below the, the spillway. So these are then for all different types of, of, of actions for floods, bad load, and so on. And uh, we have then grouped it into this, uh, in this table. So we have, on the one hand side, we have the function, stabilization, retention, and so on, and water-dominant processes, meaning flood and bad load transport, the debris-dominant processes, including debris flood and debris flow. Uh, and these are then the load combinations that should be used by calculating uh, the, the structure. Uh, of course, partial uh, factor method is a part of the semi-probabilistic design concept. We have to think about the partial safety factors. We have defined them for all different situations. For example, uh, for the limit state, the structure, uh, permanent, variable, design situations, and so on. So, of course, between 1 and 1.5. Uh, and for the uh, building material that uh, has been used from other uh, uh, national codes. Yeah. Then, at least, what should we do with the asset management? We've tried uh, uh, to, to, to create a lot of things. So, half of the structures already uh, have been recorded. So we have a journalization, we have a fact sheet, and all the information at least ends in the inventory database and in the torrent cadaster we have in Austria. 
uh, torrent count aster means about 12,000 torrents in Austria, and about, it's about 60% of the area of, the, of our country. And uh, of course, after the first recording, we have to define the key structure, standard structure, the determination of inspection intervals, how often you have to look to the structures, and we have to have an agreement uh, with the owners of the structure, because these are the villages, the communities, and so on, uh, about the inspection intervals. Uh, and of course, who is doing then this kind of inspection? We have a periodic detailed extraordination uh, inspection coming or uh, producing different ways of protocols and leading to assessment or to uh, measures. And all the information goes then into the database, so we have quite a lot of information of each structure then available. Um, key structure means that there is a periodic inspection each year for standard structures each five years. Uh, who has uh, the possibility to do it? So uh, there are special courses offered for uh, technical bureaus or civil engineers. Uh, to, to learn about uh, what they have to do during the inspection and uh, what should be then entered or put in into the database. Uh, so uh, this is the responsi responsibility, the trained staff, the trained people, or of course, if we have a detailed or extra extraordinary inspection, we have to, uh, to use experts. Uh, so this is defined and this is a, a scheme, uh, sort of the, the, the sheet of paper which has to be filled out and you can cross all the different things. This is a lot of, a lot of paperwork at least. Uh, but there are some uh, schematic sketches uh, to just to get an idea where to look and not to forget some things. Uh, and so the, at least we are coming out with a rating for key and standard structures to see if for standard structure, it's also possible to have a control disrepair or demolition if it's not necessary anymore. Going up to the, to, the, to the rating of six, where we have a very bad condition, where there is an immediate need of action, or we have to replace the structure. And so finally, this is uh, one, one structure that has been built uh, just after a big event. Uh, in this community, it should retain 50,000 cubic meters, where there's the leading process of debris flow. Uh, this is b designed according to these regulations. Uh, well, it looks, well, for a civil engineer, it looks quite nice. I don't know how some ecologists would <laughs> say about this, but it, uh, it should work at least. That it's uh, designed according to the regulations. And, uh, Let's say, okay, it's a it was a quite a good opportunity to bring together all the experience of different groups of people and, uh, and to try to standardize natural hazards on one hand side and the different mitigation works we have. Many thanks. Thank you, Hannes.